the scientific research establishment, one finds oneself back in the outside world with its means of communication. Linking countries and continents are the great international airports. Today they form one of the most important means of communication. Though usually outside the cities they serve, they are connected to the urban areas by motorways. Along these modern highways speed the vehicles of today. The more popular flying becomes between the different continents, the more the main airlines are forced to introduce modern long-haul aircraft. It was only a few years ago that the first four-engine jet passenger aircraft were first put into service. Nowadays, they attain speeds of over 600 miles an hour. Yet another step forward is being made with a new Concorde project, scheduled to come into operation soon after 1970. The Concorde, which is the result of Anglo-French cooperation, is expected to come into service in 1971. It will be designed to carry 130 passengers at a speed of Mach 2.2, high over the Atlantic. The trip from Paris to New York will take three hours and 15 minutes. Before the Concorde was designed, several airlines were asked for their exact specifications. These were passed to the French Sud Aviation Company. Bristol Olympus 593 jet engines will be the means of propulsion, which at the moment are being jointly built in Britain and France. For hours on end, models of the plane were subject to wind tunnels tests, both in British and French laboratories. This brought about the design of the Delta Wing, which has the advantage that the aircraft will fly at both super and subsonic speeds. The design allows the Concorde to fly at the most advantageous altitudes and speeds which suit the big jets of today. Furthermore, the aircraft will only break the sound barrier when it is high over the Atlantic, away from the urban districts where this might be dangerous. The imagination can even go further. One can even dream of taking a ride in one of those streamlined racing cars and being transported to the ramp of an interplanetary rocket. Destination, the moon or Mars. In a few years' time, this will inevitably become a reality. 
For some years, work has been going on at huge 250-foot high towers at Cape Kennedy, Florida. These will be used to serve the giant rocket Saturn V. The rocket will carry an Apollo capsule towards the moon. It will contain three astronauts. Meanwhile, at Huntsville in Alabama, the motors for the rockets are undergoing their preliminary tests. The of the Saturn V rockets themselves are going through a highly organized stage of construction at the works of the Boeing Company at New Orleans. Over 350 feet high, the same size as a building of 35 floors, these rockets are the most powerful which have ever been constructed. Weighing 3,000 tons, they have been built to carry a load of 45 tons at a speed of over 15,000 miles an hour. Their fuel will be six million pounds of kerosene, which will be used to burn in 10 motors during its three-stage flight. They will develop a thrust of more than 10 million pounds. Several of these rockets have already left the Boeing works and the day will not be far off when one of them will be launched from Cape Kennedy towards the moon. And that day will mark the beginning of man's conquest of the solar system. The solar system is composed of a central star and nine planets, divided into two principal groups. The first includes Mercury, Venus, the evening star, the Earth, Mars, Beyond the barrier formed by millions of asteroids, there are five other planets in space. Jupiter. Saturn and its ring. Uranus. Neptune and Pluto. The first stage of the conquest of the solar system will take place when a manned spacecraft lands on the moon. This will be the fulfillment of all the exhaustive work carried out by space scientists since 1957. Already, the exact orbits have been worked out for the outward journey. Also planned is the equally difficult trip back to Earth. One of the most difficult aspects is the training of the men who will form the crews. They have to be carefully prepared for living for days at a time in a state of total weightlessness.
Rocket launchings undertaken in the Gemini space program have taken place in the last few years with continuing success. These tests carried out by the first pioneers of space allowed craft to be placed in orbit a few hundred miles away from Earth. They paved the way for the Apollo project, which will be finally realized in about 1971. Constituting the crew of the capsule will be three astronauts. By the 1970s, the memory of the first orbits of the Earth will be a thing of the past. For the crews of the spaceships of the future, the destination will be the moon and the planets. Soon after being conquered, the moon will become a relay base for onward trips to Mars. Many of the famous craters will be covered over and used to house workshops, maintenance sheds, and laboratories. limits will the end of the century see as the spacecraft of the future shoot across the face of the solar system? 
Already science and technology is well on the way to resolving the problems presented by cosmic vessels traveling near the speed of light. The conquest of space has hardly started, but already man is beginning to think about the conquest of time. One wonders how future generations will apply the practical aspects of the theory of relativity. What will be the destiny of mankind? The march of progress consolidated in the centuries of the future will allow men to evolve beyond all comprehension. Our present faculties just cannot grasp its extent. We are as far from understanding our destiny as the most inaccessible galaxies are from the Earth, billions of light years away. <laughs>